Hi. Hey, what's up everyone? So now let's go into our next system. This is a system we designed for focusing on producing roots. Here we're aiming for cassava, sweet potatoes and taro, right? So remember the design is basically the same as all the other systems. We've got our trees row spaced every four and a half meters and then we've got two vegetable beds in between. Um, it's interesting to know the, notice that these roots, they, they, their life cycle goes from five to nine months or even more, up to 12 or 14 months depending on the variety of cassava. And like always, we don't want to wait that long. So we're gonna go ahead and plant a bit of corn here so that we can harvest some, some sweet corn early in three to four months. Um, so basically, how was the design that we did here? All right, so we've got the sweet potato uh, every 30 centimeters, 35 centimeters coming in, okay? We've got the cassava at every 60, right? And uh, uh, the I, taro. Taro, right? Just interesting about the taro because you see the cassava, we've pointed it to one direction. So the roots, really, they're gonna spread to the back of it. So we're not planting the taro right in between one cassava and another. Because these roots will will compete with the roots of the of the taro of the taro. So what we have here, we're actually planting it underneath the cassava. We're actually planting it nearby, in the opposite direction where the roots are going to sprout. So we've got roots here, and we've got roots here, and here we've got the roots from the cassava there again. Do you understand that? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting because cassava is such a sacred plant for us here in Brazil. And a lot of people think it's not possible to do consortiums with cassava because of the spreading root system of cassava. Because here in Brazil, um, in most parts of the world, people plant it a bit differently in a way that it's going to spread its roots all around the stem. But you can really direct the root to be able to have other plants with it. In fact, you could have anything here. You could have seedlings here, tree seedlings. And then when you harvest the cassava, these will not be harmed if you direct it properly. So let me go ahead and show you how to prepare the cassava stem to plant. Um, we like to plant long stems, right? People usually plant from 15 to 20 centimeters, but we like to plant them big, like from 30 to 40 or 50 centimeters, because it really gives it a head start. So we really want to have a clean cut, all right? We don't want to harm. We have to remember that this is a live plant, all right? It's alive and it's gonna stay alive when you plant it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some cuts here and I've got a all right cut it was not perfect but it's okay um, I don't want to have this pointed thing here I want to have more of a straight cut here so I'm gonna go right ahead and fix this one thing it's important to realize when you plant cassava like this right we have the stem prepared um, you can plant it like this, right? You can bury it under the soil like this, but that's gonna ha what that's gonna do is that it's gonna spread its roots all around. So I'm gonna plant it like this, so that it's gonna send its roots to this part, and then I get this part free to have other plants. So this is how it's um, directed in the soil. And it's really important for you to see where the merry stems are pointed to because you don't want to point it upside down, right? It's got a proper way to be directed. There are, are all the little merry stems here pointing to that direction. So, so that's how we plant it, all right? Um, now, let's see how we plant the sweet potatoes. Yeah, uh, but just before we go on to that, I'd just like to mention about planting these cassavas. It's basically uh, it's economically almost it's really difficult to make it economically viable 
in, in, in the conventional system because there's so much weed coming next to the cassavas that people have to come and you know pick the weed up to five times in the space of the 10 months in the space of the year depending on the variety so really planting the sweet potato you know we're covering the floor we're making sure that we're blocking that weed with this organic matter we're holding down the weed already the few ones that would have come the sweet potato has won the battle so you know it really makes it economically profitable because now we don't have to come picking weed anymore okay maybe we'll do it once just before the sweet potato wins the battle yeah okay so so we've got a stem here sweet potato right we've got it like that what we really want to do here we want to trim it down we want to make it smaller okay because we really want new roots we really want new stem and uh as we do with many of the things in agroforestry we're going to eliminate the leaves because we really want it to focus on the roots once we've planted it. If we keep the leaves alive, it's gonna you know, waste all that energy trying to fight to keep these leaves alive. And really we wanna eliminate them drastically. Just leave that little head there, okay? And in this way, we're gonna stimulate the energy in the roots. We're gonna really encourage the roots, you know? So we're gonna capture that energy and really invest in the roots so this is how we would do it uh, you know there's many different ways certain people would have it a little bit longer and they'll make the circle so they can try spread it round you know so the, the roots will shoot all round certain people will have two of these and and they'll point one to each direction so you know they'll have like so one root will shoot that way and the other root will shoot that way so you really can play with the direction that you shoot in your roots okay we're happy we're just having Lots of little ones. You know, when you've got the little ones, that's when you can really harvest in four or five months. You know, that's when it really invests in the root and that's when you see faster results. And when we use the point of the stem, you know, because uh, if we went ahead, where is it? This here, which was the continuation, we can plant this and it will sprout and you will have potatoes, but it's really a case so it might take double the, the time really. Uh, it's, just not, it's just not the vigorous part of the plant so we really want the new sprout we want investing in the roots so if you plant it in this manner you really you really bring down the harvest time to up to half yeah that's great um, so now let's go to our last plant which is the taro this is just a very special plant because it's a great mm. food right you can do so many things with it um, so this is a uh, a taro root right and we're gonna plant it we always prepare it you know we take down the leaves taro's got really really big leaves so if if this root already has its leaves sprouted we're really we're gonna cut it and we're gonna make a, um, a diagonal cut right like this and then I'm gonna plant it and I'm gonna position it like this on the soil all right because I want it to sprout and it's gonna bend like a knee here and it's gonna sprout and it's gonna produce a new rhizome, right? This is what I want because I want the plant to completely renew itself. So it's gonna produce a new rhizome here. You can do the same thing with, uh, with banana rhizomes when you plant bananas from the rhizome. It's the same idea. And so really go ahead with a machete or another two and you're gonna direct it and place it like this on the soil and then you're perfect to go yeah and then the taro is gonna sprout on the front produce a new rhizome and produce all the the satellite rhizomes and produce great food um, so apart from these three the sweet potatoes is the first one to be harvested, right? It's going to take from four to five, maybe six months. And the taro and the cassava are going to take from eight to ten months, right? The cassava is probably going to be the last one to harvest. But we're going to go right ahead and plant corn here. And maybe some tomatoes and maybe some other vegetables. We could also take the opportunity to plant a lot more things here. Um, we really can 
take the opportunity and use the space while th these plants that take longer have not really taken hold of the whole bed. Yeah, you know, we love planting tree seedlings uh, in front of the taro, like I mentioned earlier. Obviously here, this is not a tree bed. Okay, so we won't be doing that here. This is the vegetable bed in between the tree rows. But you know, you're welcome to go and plant these in the tree beds, the cassavas and the seedlings right there. And it's a great mother, it really nurtures it well. Okay, and I just wanted to go back to, to, to the point, just making, making sure you understand the importance, you know, about the elbow. So it's really got to grow and build that elbow. And, the, you know, once it's grown and it's got that elbow, it just makes it more sustainable for the wind. And this is just a basic principle throughout many different types of plants. You know, we can talk about this with like mango seeds. People want to plant mango seeds where they point up, where they shoot up. No, we would like to plant it lay down why because it lays down and then it goes up so we, with trees in general we like to plant it like an elbow it's just how it is in nature if you throw a mango seed on the floor it's going to fall like that so it's perfect it falls flat so it bends over and it makes the elbow you know so really nature tends to force its seeds and its roots that sprout really just to make that elbow and and, and be more resistant to wind really That's pretty much great. So um, that, that's our vegetable system and I hope you enjoyed it and we're waiting you in the next video. So Thanks a lot for watching. The Agroforestry Academy crew, sign out. <laughs>